All right, so I got to ask you. Um, I, I stated that alkalinity I thought was the most important um, parameter for uh, for a reef tank, specifically SPS. And you um, you beg to differ. You you uh, you have a different opinion. What is the most important parameter for a reef tank? I want everybody to understand this right from the beginning, though. Um, listen, alkalinity is very important. Um, calcium and magnesium they're also very important for your reef aquarium to keep stability in the aquarium, but if you really want to achieve stability in your aquarium, chase your pH. It's the, it's the thing everybody says, do not chase your pH, you know? And when I met a friend of mine oh, over a decade ago, um, Chris Wood, um, he, he told me, I don't understand why people don't monitor their pH and why they don't keep their pH boosted. I just don't understand. I can't get my head around it. You know, as a Marine scientist, pH dictates everything in your system. And, I didn't believe him. I never went and, you know, never went any farther with the conversation. And here we are over a decade later, Jake and I, as a matter of fact, back when the beginning of COVID was, um, he said something about pH and, and, and I started talking about pH with him and him and I were going back and forth with it. And I started talking to my friend Chris about it. And he's like, well, dude, he's like, I've been trying to tell you that for over a decade. You got to chase your <laughs> pH. Stop chasing your alkalinity because when you're chasing your alkalinity, that's what you're doing. You're chasing alkalinity. It's, and the reason why is because of this little devil that's in your aquarium. And it's in every single aquarium. And you don't even realize how bad it is. It's called carbonic acid. And I'm going to have people that aren't, aren't going to agree with me on this. I don't care because I've, I'm proving what my friend has told me for a decade hmm. that it is completely true. If you chase your pH, you won't have to chase your alkalinity anymore. And there's a reason behind that. When you put carbonates in your water – you have carbonic acid that's already present in your water because your pH isn't at eight point. He told me to keep my pH around 8.25 and above in the daytime, your pH will naturally rise because of photosynthesis taking place yep. in your aquarium. Okay. So at nighttime, how do you fix that? We'll get into that down the road. But what happens is, is the carbonic acid buildup in your tank dissipates during the day because you have corals that are uptaking the CO2. Well, I'm sorry, not the corals, but the photosynthesis is taking place is uptaking it. So that raises your pH because there's less CO2 in the water, which means there's less carbonic acid in the water, which also means that there's less carbonic acid binding up your alkalinity or your carbonates and sticking it in every pore and crevice in your rock, in your any substrate that's porous will hold carbonates because carbonic acid is putting it, I like to say it's putting it in jail. And how do you free up your carbonates that are in your water? Well, there's a multitude of ways you can go about doing it. Keeping your pH up is the key thing. So how do you keep your pH up without um, doing some crazy things uh, like, like we're doing? <laughs> um, I tell everybody, you know, the old school reefers had it right. I mean, from the 70s when Greg Scheimer and, and Julian Sprung were dosing Cockbosser in their system and they were keeping acropores alive. To today, it still holds true. What's the difference between what they were doing and what we're doing now? What we're doing now is we're doing alkalinity, calcium, magnesium buffing, plus a bunch of other things, which is not, there's nothing wrong with that, but nobody's thinking about why we're having to add so much of that. You know, there's that little devil called carbonic acid that is making us add more and more and more and more and more constantly. Your corals aren't taking that stuff up all, all the time. I mean, you could, you could put, alkalinity buffer in your tank and you can watch your alkalinity go you know stay stable and it'll fall out well that was happening in the middle of the day they didn't, the corals weren't even putting down calcium carbonate on their skeletons at that time mm. so why was your alkalinity falling is because the carbonic acid was binding it up and sticking it in your rocks sticking it in every pore and every crevice in your tank so everybody always says to me well, you're chasing your ph with um with with caulk phosphor and we're also using something called uh, potassium hydroxide, which is something I don't recommend anybody use. We're on a commercial level. We're on a 2200 gallon system. You guys don't, any hobbyist doesn't need to use that stuff. I mean, if you have a pH that is staying that low and you can't get it up because of, but by just using caulk phosphor, there's other things you have to do to help, help your system out, bring in some fresh air to your protein skimmer, get a CO2 scrubber on the air intake for your protein skimmer. There's so many things that you can do, but what happens to the to your alkalinity when you dose 
calcium hydroxide or Kalkwasser, everybody always says, oh, your alkalinity goes to the roof. It, 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 no, it boosts your alkalinity. No, it's actually your alkalinity was already in your system. You just didn't know it was there because your carbonic acid had it in jail. And <laughs> now, now it's getting released. In, now you're putting in hydroxides, which are then freeing them from their prison. So what happens is, and, and I can explain this to you in more detail. It's, it's, it's funny because when, when we first started using the potassium hydroxide on the farm system in the back, and we were putting one drop every three seconds in the system, and my pH went from 8.14 at peak during the day to 8.35. At one drop every three seconds, wow. my mind was like, what the <laughs> heck is this stuff? It is the nastiest stuff. I mean, and I'm putting it in my aquarium. You know, my wife's going, I can't believe you're putting that stuff in. If you overdose, you're killing everything in the farm. And I'm like, I'm doing it on a control. I'm doing you, it myself. Are you doing that by, you're doing that by hand? <laughs> I did for a week and a half until I until I had kind of a grasp of how it yeah. worked and, and, and what it was going to actually do to the system. Because, I mean, if I added 50 mils at a time, it wouldn't be a – of a pure 100% max concentration potassium hydroxide, I'd, I'd nuke my system. I mean, the pH would go through the roof. Um, we actually don't even, you know, I did the one drop every three seconds, and then I did the math to figure out how many mLs that would be in a minute. And then I did a calculation to do a one third solution. I actually do one third of the max concentration as a dose on a dosing pump now. And there's rules set in the apex so that it doesn't dose if it's above a certain pH. It only doses when it's at a certain pH or below. Um, but it's it's really amazing what even just calcium hydroxide does for the coral system. Um, I had a guy start using calcium hydroxide or caulkbuster, and he's like, my alkalinity has gone up so high. I'm like, well, what is it? He's like, it's at 8.9. I keep it at 8.3. I'm like, what are you worried about? Yeah, that's about? not a big deal. And he... I said, do your corals look good? He's like, they look great. And I'm like, well, when your corals start looking like they're stressed, then you're doing something wrong. And it went all the way to 13. Ooh. And now it's slowly, wow. it's because it was getting freed up. It was in his rock. It was in his biomedia. And it took about three months for his to start coming back down. But that's the thing nobody has the patience for. And everybody's freaking out over. Everybody thinks that if your alkaline doesn't stay stable all the time, it's not a good thing. In reality, once it peaks, it stays stable at that high alkalinity. But then as your corals utilize it and no more is being released from your rock, it will come down. That's why and you'll have that's why I don't um, control with my uh, cage director because I want to see every day what that monitor is reading. I want to see a gradual decline in the alkalinity because then I know my SPS are happy and sucking up, you know, that um, – that 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 alkalinity supplementation so i don't want you know even though i'm i'm you know I'm, I'm a little bit lazy and i've talked about this before you know i could certainly look at the data if i logged on to the app every day to see what it is dosing and, and what it is not dosing in terms of how many mls per day and whether it's you know c the corals are consuming but i just like to visually walk by that you know that that lcd screen to see what what that level is every every day just to know that i do too you know, my, my, you know, that, that things are healthy. Um, right. so yeah. And, and, um, what was, what's your pH? So, all right. pH wise, I am, um, I'm really good. I, I installed an air exchange unit about three months ago. So I've got, I awesome. got two systems. I've got 187 gallon established SPS dominant reef. That's been up and running for uh, three and a half, four years or something like that. And it's, and it's uh, awesome. doing really, really well. And I got, a, I started a new 225 gallon peninsula tank uh, about five months ago. And I put Jake will uh, love this. I put corals in for the first time today. Finally, after nice. five months, I added some SPS. <laughs> I'm the patient type. So, um, cool. so on my established system, my, before I put in the, um, air exchange unit, my pH was, 8.0 to 8.3, which, you know, it's, it was, was great. I'm, I'm dosing two part on that system. And, mm -hmm. um, but when I put in that air exchange unit, it jumped up 0.2, um, pH points. So, so you're at 8.2 to what? 8.4, yes. 8.5. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and on the new system, my pH, um, 
sometimes peaks out at 8.6. I'm running a calcium reactor. It's it's barely running because I barely have any corals in there, so it's it's peak. There's no biomass to take care of it. Right, so uh, you know it's it, that on that system it's eight three to eight six, so that's been huge for me because my tanks are in a finished basement, and I'm in Vermont with the windows are closed in the winter time, so there's nothing coming from the outside in, and um, you know I tried running an airline tubing from the uh, the air intake on the skimmer to the outside, I had a utility window that I was doing that with a little like half inch, you know, clear tubing hose doing that. Did mm -hmm. not work for me. So um, I tried that. And, um, you know, I, uh, I I was doing two part on the established system because I was afraid to use a calcium reactor because I knew that the pH would be would be low. But I always do dose cockwasser when I use a calcium reactor just to help boost the pH. Yep. A little trick for your calcium reactor, and most people don't know to do this. Um, something that I learned, and it's kind of just something I came up with. I mean, maybe some other somebody else did it before me, but you know, my big concern was exactly what you said. When I when I got sick and tired of constantly dosing alkalinity buffers, magnesium and calcium chloride salts all the time to keep my my parameters stable, I, I bit the bullet and I bought you know big calcium reactors for these systems. And my biggest fear was okay, I have a hard time keeping pH. I'm in an open air environment. I shouldn't have low pH. Yeah. You know, I, I, I shouldn't have these issues. And when I put the calcium reactor on, I wanted to make sure that there was no possible way that I was going to drop the pH even farther. So I talked to Julian. Julian's like, put a CO2 scrubber on it. And I'm like, oh, CO2 scrubber. I'm like, well, the biggest CO2 scrubber most everybody has on your aquarium is a protein skimmer. And most people think it exchanges and adds oxygen to your water. That's the biggest myth you could ever find. It adds no oxygen to your water. You can check your protein skimmer off. Your oxygen content will not change. If it changes, it's so minuscule, it doesn't make a difference. But your CO2 will go up. I guarantee you that, which means you have more carbonic acid in your system. So a protein skimmer is a huge CO2 scrubber. So I ended up taking my effluent from my calcium reactor, going up through the cap of the protein skimmer, running a hard line down into the water column of the, pro of the protein skimmer mm. where the bubble blasters were just churning it up. And I tested the effluent coming out of the protein skimmer, and I was at 0.1 drop from the main system, which – if I had it going directly in, it was putting a, a pH of, of 6.5 directly into the, into the system. And before I started this hydroxide dosing, we were dosing two liters a minute through my calcium reactor. Ooh. We were melting 20 kilos of Julian Sprung's two, two Little Fishes um, Reborn every month and a half. Wow. Um, I changed it out in January and the damn calcium reactor hasn't run but 24 hours since the beginning of January. And it just started running because my alkalinity finally has stopped leaching out of the rocks and being freed. My corals have finally uptaken enough of it to the point where my alkalinity peaked out in that system at 9.8 and never went above that, but never would go to below the 8.6 threshold where my CO2 controller kicks on to run my calcium reactor. So it was, I don't know, a week and a half ago. I called my buddy Chris up. I'm like, hey, Chris, I'm like, the alkalinity is 8.62. And he's like, oh, yeah? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, we got 0 0.02 to fall in the next six hours, <laughs> and maybe my calcium reactor will come on for the first time this year. And sure enough, it went to 8.58, and it ran for six hours. The alkalinity went from 8.58. Six hours later, it was all the way up to 9.05, and that's the, highest, that's the highest it's been in two weeks. Wow.